Welcome to Lido Berlin outside, actually Lido in uh, Angra Turbas ahead of uh, Berlin Geek. So uh, uh, welcome to Berlin. For, for Thank you. All. Thank you so much. It's always very, very nice to be here. I haven't been here so many times, but uh, I have always great memories of being here. And you are right now on your world tour that actually takes you about one year to complete. So first of all, how it is to be on such a long tour? Uh, well, we have nine, 91 confirmed concerts. Nine. We want to reach at least 100. That's our goal. And we have 91 already, which is nice. So we, we had this 20... 7, 26 or 27 gigs here in Europe, then around more than 30 in US, then we go to Japan, Asia, lots of countries in South America and many cities in Brazil, of course. It's going to be a nice year. Uh, yeah, and how has the tour started for you and what are your expectations for the rest of the tour? Uh, Brazil is going to be crazy, of course. Well, it couldn't be better. It started here, in Europe. Our first concert was in Belgium. It was very, very nice. There are four bands with us. I mean, us plus three. So it's a night of metal. It's a night of celebrating music for people who come to check. Excellent bands. Excellent uh, support bands. We had a few. We had a Villian that had a few dates there from Italy. They had a few dates. We had, um, we still have Halcyon Way, a band from America. Excellent band. And now we have an, uh, Haven's Cry from Italy too, replacing a Villian. Another Italian band that I can't remember the, now, the name now, which was very good too. And of course, Operation Mad Crime from Jeff Tate. Well, um, for me, it's such an honor. I was always a fan of him, uh, even before the even before the, the this album, Operation Man Crime. I started to listen to Queen's Rage when I was in '85, '85, '86. I I remember I was 15. A friend of mine was showing me he was playing a VHS tape of their live show in Tokyo. They had. Two albums out, albums out. I think it were there were uh, the warning and the rage for order. So I liked the way they combined metal to progressive music, and the kind of pro progressive music that I I'm into, like Pink Floyd, Genesis, old Rush stuff, Rush in general, combining to Iron Maiden and at the time you know. Iron Maiden and White Snake, you know, some hard rock from White Snake, together with Maiden and then Pink Floyd. It was, I thought it was a good combination. And there I learned that those idols of mine, they could be stirred up, they could be put into a cooking pan, and as ingredients to a new sound. So that concept was very important for me. That's why it's a, it, it was a very important discovery and it, it's an honor to be here playing at the same and the same bill as Operation Man in Crime and I mean the honor of having them supporting Angra, you know, it is majestic. Well talking about uh, love the fans, of course love it, but what makes a good Angra geek for you? Mm. All right, good question. A good angry gig for me is a round connection between the band and the crowd. I mean, if I connect to the crowd and the singer does a connection to the crowd, it's it's nice. But when we have a good connection, like a single entity out of our connection, connecting to the crowd and then the whole crowd connected to that singularity and it's divine it's the good concert okay and uh, how have the lives changed over the years from the early days my uh, life? Y yeah my personal life, life. yeah, yeah. Uh, no 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 your live performances 
oh, on the right. stage. Okay, so my I have, live right. performances. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, because my life is... I'm 46. <laughs> I started, I was 19. So it's like my whole life. I've been more inside anger than out, you know? Yeah, yeah. I started with... No, I was 19. It's, 20, it's 27 years as best. So it's like my life has... If, if I picture it, I see a bigger uh, share, you know, mm. of anger in, well, anyway, live performance. Well, throughout the 27 years, we have changed a lot the lineup, right? So the connection, in, the inside connection is changed a lot. And it, it has always to be, to be built, to be worked. It's like a garden where you have some some plants you need to water you know replace oh this one likes better here better than because the sun is still warm at this time of the year you need to take care of that connection and it, if you change it all the time it makes easy at certain level but harder at, at other level because you need to recontact reconnect with your audience yeah. so it's a lot of work Inside work, um, outside work with the people, and then it's like beyond the borders of the rehearsal room. Oh, everything else, you know, Oof, it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Serious. Ow, it, I need to change position. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, like you said, you know, Angra started already in 91, so... Uh, how would you, that's an amazing feat it's amazing uh, accomplishment so uh, what are your thoughts on that such a long career well i like doing it i didn't quit because of money because many we had many moments without money i didn't quit because of sacrifice because i mean it's needed i didn't quit because of many things that could have me quit it I kept doing because I do it uh, for love. I really like it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. Um, I would. When I started doing, when I was young and I started doing, I wanted to have a band, and I wanted to 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 share my life with these guys, and I wanted to share my music with the people, with the crowd. So. When it's just a little crowd to share, it's fine. It's fine. Because the little crowd that it's eventually there is... I mean, sometimes it's beyond my expectations when I started. I didn't know how big would be the crowd. So, like, sometimes 15 people. It's a lot. Especially because they're very passionate. Some people... I mean... There in Brazil, Angra is a huge thing, right? Because we don't have that many metal uh, icons from Brazil. We have Angra, Sepultura, which is like probably one of the biggest metal icons. And then we have other bands, good bands, punk bands like Ratos de Porão. We have trash metal bands like... Uh, we have Corses. We have Torture Squad, great band. We have uh, Death Metal. I don't know the, if it's Black Metal, but there's Crisium, very good band from Brazil. But the thing is, doing power metal, progressive, power, melodic, that's Angra. So our share, I mean, we're, we're the, in the peak of that, of that pyramid, right? People that get, they get very crazy, like if it's a religion, it's oh, it's too important for their lives, and I feel. I mean, I don't like. Not that I feel sorry. I feel like I should consider that, you know. So many times I, I, I take it as serious as the very passionate fans. I am very passionate also with my music. Okay, okay. So uh, like you said. After the break. Uh, yeah, <laughs> after the break. Uh, yeah, like you said, uh, almost uh, 30 years, uh, 27 years of career already. Uh, what have been the most memorable moments for you? All right. Memorable moments. There are many. 
and a few concerts, of course. When we played with Bruce, Bruce Dickinson in France, Les Zenit, we played Les Zenit. I think it was 1998. He wasn't back to Maiden yet, so he he was building his career. So it was uh, we had the same record company, I think, in France. So they they managed to have us together. So it was a huge moment. A little afterwards, he he was. I mean, I don't know if it, a little afterwards, but a while af after, he. He joined back to Maiden, and Maiden became monster again, and oh, I was very happy because I was I'm still a Maiden fan, you know. So playing with him at Les Anit in France was a huge moment. Ah, someone got me at that point. Uh, the Eddie, okay, the the mascot or Maiden, yeah, yeah, the Eddie mask. So I played Flight of Icarus. I think it was Run to the Hills. Flight of Icarus, Run to the Hills, and um, maybe a third one. Maybe, I, I can't remember exactly, but maybe The Number of the Beast or Wasted Years. One of those. I had it wearing the, the Eddie mask. It was very nice. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, well, uh, back to Angra. You have a new album out this year, uh, Omni or Omni. Yeah. So, uh, what are your thoughts on that album? All right. Okay. This album is the result of a um, whole life of research. Either researching for music, ways to connect chords, to build melodies, to find arrangements with the guitar. It's always trying to put, this, put all the ideas into a structure, like a coherent structure. So that changes, right? And some people said, "Oh, I prefer, I I like better the way you you were writing songs when you were 19." I said, well, "Not me. I don't. You know, I see many, many places that could get better. I mean, that's why I want. We all, we need to see it. And preferences. I mean, the result. Music is so abstract. It's so hard to evaluate. You know. But anyway, and then." In the other way, in the other hand, how to bring ideas into this music, because it's going to be sang, right? Words will be spoken, so we need to think on what to say, right? So I think this is my ultimate masterpiece, not because of my part, but because I, I think I have mastered my ability to to work in a group which is very hard because it's like everyone's got ideas everyone is creative and so it, how to put that uh, into a frame or into a direction not a frame but a direction and a shape shape and direction how to put that into shape and direction in the speed of light, because it's stuff happen in real time. When you're there, people are giving ideas. It's like a circumstance. It's the present. So one could be mad because you're not accepting that idea. You could be mad because they're not getting what you want. So it's a matter of controlling their emotions, being mature, focusing on something that should be done like that. And that is more important than any of the human problems that we have, you know. We should really build something beyond beyond our lower stages of connection. Uh, yeah, uh, is there a song on that album that has a special meaning to you over others? All of them. Okay. Yeah. I mean, of course, there is one which I sing, and I like to sing, and I am a poser, you know, I like to sing just to pose, no, I'm just joking, <laughs> but it is a song, it's a very personal song, that's why I wanted to sing that one, because it, it's about my personal experience, I wanted to put on that one, my personal interpretation, and it's a song 
written for a baritone, not for a tenor. You know, it, it sounds better on a lower range. And I am a baritone. Fabio is a tenor. So I picked that one for me because it's personal and it's for my voice range. Uh, you've been talking about the interaction between uh, bandmates and between the audiences. And, well, Angra's career has been such a long one and there's been uh, quite many uh, changes in the lineup. But what is the essence of Angra that always remains? Good question. Uh, well, I think um, it's hard to say, right? Yeah. I can only speculate, right? Um, I think that now I'm the only original member. So, uh, stuff that other people on our history, stuff that they brought, it's hard for me to keep in their perspective. So I try to, to have a good learning from the positive sides of everyone who's been here put this into my own perspective and try to bring it. But the point is, now, in order to bring it, I'm the only one who will filter. So it's hard to say that uh, if the essence is, is just something out of our control or if it is something that I've been filtering. So I try to believe that it's out of my future. So I don't filter with my ego. Yeah. But it's hard. It's hard because I'm human. I'm stubborn. I'm selfish sometimes. I, I get aggressive. If I am impatient sometimes. Impatient. So I try to control my problems because I know now many of the coincidences of the bad stuff, bad stories in the line that I was involved, all right? So I can trace how would be my, not my fault, it's not a good word, but my responsibility. Yeah. So I could kind of adjust, you know? Uh, you already talk about the uh, Brazilian metal scene, about uh, big bands that have come out of Brazil, but uh, how do you see the metal scene on a ground level today in Brazil? Um, how is the metal scene doing in there? Well, we're, we're still struggling. The thing is, I think the metal scene need to be very uh, thriving, uh, how do you call it, um, positive in a way mature, grown up, you should have good magazines, good media, specialized media, good crowd, I mean different crowd interested on in different styles of metal bands, good studios and rehearsal rooms so you can build music and producers to, to make it, to put it into records, and then record companies of people interested on releasing, even if it's only digital, right? So then we create a circuit. I think... We have good, talented people there in Brazil in all areas. The point is, um, we still don't know how to work as a team, right? So everyone in these areas, they cannot see how they could build beyond their fences, beyond their limits, because uh, it's a very ignorant country where people see their universe on uh, very small. They don't see that their universe includes the other. So, well, many, many great bands. I would say my favorite is Project 46. Incredible band from Brazil. They have put an album just now in December, I think, or January. And it was, it is called Tres, which means third. We, because, I think it's because he, it, it is their third album. It is in Portuguese. 
But now they are re-recording the album in English, but the version in Portuguese is the best. I mean, I haven't heard the one in English, but the, the, I speak Portuguese, I understand, so I get very touched, very touched by the lyrics, by the music, by the connection with the rhythm, the rhythm of the words, you know, with the meaning. Uh, very good. So that's a good band from Brazil. And they are doing very fine. I mean, they are very professional. They know how to work as a team. They're all working on different stuff like social media. They do their own stuff like we in the band. Like Felipe is helping the social media a lot. So is Bruno, F Fabio and, and uh, Marcelo. Marcelo has great ideas for promoting. You know, he's, he's, he's very into... Um, he knows a lot about marketing, about digital marketing, right? They're day three. Marcelo, Felipe, and Bruno. They are like thunderbolts. Like they're very fast. They know about many stuff that I don't even understand, you know, about the modern life, about the modern marketing, how it works, the word, the world today. For me, it's still confusing. So, and Fabio is like me. He came from his old school. So, he's more relaxed, laid back guy, kind of guy. Yeah, uh, yeah. Fabio is known for a lot of uh, projects. So, in your mind, um, how has he fit in in Angra? He is feeling fine, yes. Yes, I mean, I think it was a bless. The lineup that I have today, I think it's a bless. It's uh, divine. It's something from God. Or the universe, or from, of beyond my understanding, because it's the, I was lucky to have them, you know, yeah. the perfect people. Okay, thank you so much, and uh, regular thank tonight. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.